NSE 20 share index new year highs every single day should we be looking at 4200 now <laughs> look into your crystal balls for us. <laughs> I, I, I don't like doing that but I, but what I like commenting on is the trend yes and right now we see the trend still maintaining because again the, 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 the whatever was driving in the stock market the, the foreign investor participation uh, uh, easing of inflation also still there uh, what 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 may has may, may may have turned in the last couple of weeks or so is the direction of interest rates. That wait wait a moment before we get to interest rates. What I hear you saying is that this trend will continue this um, upward spike in the twenty share index as long as investors will have us. Sixty six percent is how much investors accounted for trades yesterday. Foreign investors, yes. Foreign investors, rather, yes. Yes, the, uh, and obviously uh, I think returns here relative to what they're getting in Europe are still better. Right. Uh, shilling has been holding stable and. Um, our central bank uh, governor has every motivation to maintain it at that, uh, seeing that we are more and more we are getting uh, a lot more um, foreign denominated loans. So there's every motivation to maintain it stable. So if you're if you're if, if you if you're having uh, if you're able to uh, uh, get uh, low cost uh, for foreign foreign exchange denominated, especially euro denominated or dollar denominated uh, financing at say one percent you're going to get more than 8-9% on dividends yields now, alone. Now that you talked about the interest rate and the shilling, 85 to 85.50 range, that's where some analysts expect it to be trading. So far it's remaining stable, where do you see it going? Well, uh, if, if it threatens to, to move over to 86, yes, you, you can expect central bank to kick in and mop up liquidity just to support the shilling. So we're going to see a lot of that trend. So for us, uh, we've always maintained that the um, the foreign exchange rate is a, is a managed variable uh, by the central bank. So for us, we think that the motivation for central bank is still to maintain it at 8586. Does anybody remember when the shilling used to be at 78, 77? Or is that so so long in history, we, we've forgotten about it? <laughs> 94 was it was at 30 something. Yeah, yeah, my goodness, <laughs> I, I was in uh, early, uh, lower primary school. <laughs> yeah, and uh, at around that time, Golden Bug. Ob obviously, uh, if, if you go back to the history of the shilling, and uh, yes. it floated just around 90, uh, 1992, um, ever since there's been a downward trajectory, and which, which, which then begs the question, if, if uh, foreign ex uh, a weaker shilling yes. uh, is supposed to boost uh, for, um, you know, exports, then we should be exports giants by now. Yes, <laughs> yes, but it's not happening. You know the people I envy? The Ghanaians. The Ghanaians say they trades at almost one to one to the, the, dollar. To the dollar. It's incredible. Uh, if, if they maintain that, then uh, there's a good chance that they will be able to develop. Because one, one as aspect of, of, of exports is really your ability to import inputs at, at, a, at a you know low cost, yes. and which, which, which is really helped by strength of the local currency. So again, that begs the question, do you want a weak currency or do you want a stable currency? All right, I, I will not answer that. Let's just leave it <laughs> hanging there for a moment. Yes. Kabasid, result out yesterday, the profits jumped, especially on higher sales. You said you're expecting to see this? Yeah, um, for, for a while we've been looking at Kabasid and we thought perhaps uh, maybe we, we, the market is selling it short, uh, simply because uh, we, we knew that, I mean, um, the, the 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 local bottling activities of Coca Cola uh, are gonna expand. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if you look at Pepsi, are setting up shop, uh, put up a, a, a small plant. I think it's a pilot plant. Prob probability of that growing larger is is, is uh, this is a huge probability of that. Uh, so again, there's more. Um, carbon dioxide requirements of course again in the region uh, you've got you've got South Sudan growing as a market uh, Ethiopia uh, if, if, if the trade agreements can be done fast enough that's another huge market um, we've got so Somali stabilizing another market yes yes uh, Uganda growing uh, Tanzania our neighbors down south Rwanda all, all these are potential markets and and all we've got businesses here uh, both locally and regionally uh, expanding their capacities uh, bottling businesses and they're gonna need a little, a little bit more co2 to to you know keep their foods fresh so there's a huge scope for growth for CO, for carbon carbon uh, dioxide. dioxide use and and therefore for carbon acid. 
Now that we're on regional matters, let's tackle two regional matters quickly. Umeme, the CEO Charles Chapman was on my set yesterday. We talked about all sorts of things. And one of the, um, the, the things, the IPO is open in Uganda right now, but they're hoping to cross-list in Kenya. But the point is Kenyans and indeed East Africans are open to invest in Uganda. It's priced at 275 Ugandan shillings, just under 10 US cents. What do you make of that? Because the last thing um, everybody else in the region remembers, the biggest IPO in Uganda was Tanbik, yes. and which some people made a, like, a killing out of. Yeah, uh, but for, for, for investments in Uganda, I've always tried to sensitize the investors on one, uh, two things. Yes. Number one, uh, what are the fundamentals of the company? They, they, for for Umem, it seems sound. Uh, I know their return on equity has been uh, sig significant. Yes. It's been good. Uh, it's incomparable to what we have. Uh, not necessarily incomparable, but it's it's a, it's it's a, it's a, it compares well mm -hmm. with uh, KPLC Kenya. So there's that's one. And secondly, the second issue was the uh, currency, the the strength of the U Ugandan shilling. Uh, you know, it's possible for you to make money on the on the stock, but when you convert to shillings, you've lost money. Yes. So those are the two issues we like. Uh, we'd like. Um, to, to look at more in depth. Uh, however, we would also, also like to urge the Ugandan authorities to make a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of their data more available. Some of the data, for, especially from the central bank, um, if you look at what they report and what we report, uh, there's there's a gap in what in the data we have, and and that will if if they are able to to give a, give us a lot more of that data, especially uh, the monetary policy. Yes. Uh, and then we can act, predict a little bit more and we'll probably be able to understand the risk a little bit more. Sometimes we, we assume that the risk is higher, even when it's probably not. Yes. Or sometimes we, we, we think that the risk is unmanageable when it really is, uh, it, it, the risk uh, existing notwithstanding. So we, we just like that uh, data gap addressed for now. Right. So basically, sometimes they tend to give an executive summary when all you want is the, the details and the charts and the graphs and everything in there. Yes, yes. So because there's a fundamental issue and then there's a systemic risk issue. Right. Okay, let's talk about another regional issue, which is the This Doing Business Report 2013 out of the World Bank. Uganda has overtaken Kenya as a preferred destination. And the technical matter I was mentioning earlier is they have done reforms in corporate insolvency and have done poorly in getting building permits, which appears to be a very small thing. Hey, red, red, red tape. Uh, but you yes. see, the, the, the unfortunate thing about red tape is that uh, you'll, you'll get quite a bit of resistance from government. Uh, in, in, in rolling back some of that red tape mm -hmm. because they, they think it's justified. Uh, but if you ask me, the, I mean, uh, we've, we've, we've got too much, we, we focus too much on things that uh, don't make sense at the expense of, you know, job creation. And the thing about uh, competitiveness is that when, we, when, we, when, we, when companies start preferring uh, regional players as their hub, right. uh, then you, you start losing uh, so some of the jobs that ought to have been coming here. Now you're losing them to other places. Mm -hmm. And again, the, it also impacts uh, negatively on our financial uh, strategy, sector strategy, where we want to make Kenya a regional financial hub. If it takes so long to register pro uh, some of these uh, instruments, yes. then it, it obviously uh, the investor will prefer to go elsewhere where they can be done a bit faster. You know, I'm noticing a trend here, just based on this latest uh, World Bank report. The smaller the country, the, fee the, the, the smaller the red tape, and the bigger you are, the bureaucracy is high, because Rwanda is at the top of that, and Rwanda is a small country. Uganda is second in East Africa, and then Kenya, which is fairly large, um, large and then Tanzania is behind <laughs> us, and they're larger than we are. Burundi is the outlier here, the, which is the exception which makes the rule. Yeah, yeah, true, but uh, again, uh, I, I don't know where that fear is born, born from. You make a very good observation. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't, you know, really, really the, the, whole, the whole idea is fear because you, you're afraid X, X will happen or Y right. will happen and you try to prevent it be, before it does. But at what cost? That's the question. At what cost? Because at the end of the day, risk must be borne. The, the, the reason we have a return is because there's risk. If there was no, if there was no risk, then right. everybody would have been doing it. And okay. No, no returns on, on, on that.